What the hell is that? You know what it is, bitch. Sorry again for how fast this video is probably going to move. It was necessary for me to make it this fast to be able to fit it into an amount of time that wasn't absolutely ridiculous. I'll have extra information as well as some time skips to certain parts in the description below as well as links to like various other effects that I didn't have time to cover in this video but are really cool effects so you should be sure to check those out. First thing I like to do is make a backdrop for my videos, which generally sets the theme and the color for the entire video. I know some editors are really good at being able to use multiple themes and colors in their videos, which is definitely something you should try out because you might be good at it. But unfortunately, I'm not one of those people, so I try to stick with just one theme. Basically what I'm doing here is just messing around with different gradients to find something I like and that I think goes good with the song and my plan for the video. Um, you can also add overlays to your backdrops, but try to keep them fairly subtle so that they don't kind of overwhelm and take over your whole video. Because the focus shouldn't be on your backdrop, your backdrop should mostly just serve to amplify the rest of your video. Once you have your video's general background done, it's time to start importing your media and actually working on your video. For me, that means the next thing I'm going to generally start doing is keyframing whatever file that I decide to put in first. Depending on the type of video you're doing, you might want to use a lot of keyframing or very little keyframing. Um, by making the intervals between the nodes when you're keyframing further apart or closer together, you can control how fast or how slow your, your images actually pan from one part to another. Another trick that affects how the images move is by changing the node type from linear to one of the other options available. You can do this by right-clicking on one of the nodes and just selecting from the list. For this video and for a lot of my videos, I like to use the fast option for all of my notes. I've also decided to split up this clip in between the most dramatic pan changes that I've done and adding a small blur in between them to help ease the transition. You can keep it as the default crossfade if you want, but I think adding little transitions like blur or dissolve or flash or something like that really helps videos look nicer. So when you decide to add text to your video, it really depends on the type of video you want, what kind of text you're going to use, and what effects you're going to use on your text. In fact, a lot of videos actually look really nice without text at all, but for this instance, I'm just going to be doing some really basic text and putting a circle behind it, and I'm also going to set the circles layer to add to help it blend into the video a little bit more. And the next thing I'm doing is just adding in another clip and doing some more keyframing and setting up some really basic transitions. Um, and then I'm adding in some more text. And there are tons of things you can do for text. And my best advice to you for adding text is to mess around with it and treat it like you would anything else in your video. Um, right here you can see that I'm masking portions of the text out. Um, and adding more to it as I mask as I go with the keyframes to make it look sort of like handwritten cursive text. Um, another couple things that I'd recommend messing around with when playing with text is definitely check out the bump map and if you have new blue effects the gradient tint on the text looks really nice. I tend to do those things quite a lot myself. I basically rinse and repeat this process for the bulk of my videos after that. If you're looking to do a video that's really heavy on effects, instead of me sitting here and trying to show you every single Sony Vegas effect there ever was, my best advice to you is to really look at other editors and draw inspiration from the things they do. Find something you like and try to deconstruct what they did so you can replicate something similar for yourself in Vegas later on. Um, that being said, be careful not to actually copy somebody since that kind of takes away the entire point of video editing and then it really stops being your work and starts being their work that you copied. So after I finish getting things generally laid out and I've more or less completed the video, which we're going to pretend that I've completed this video for the sake of time, um, I try to give the video a little bit more of a unified color scheme even after I've done my backdrop and stuff like that. Um, 
You can download different Sony Vegas colorings off of YouTube and apply them to your videos, or you can actually manually make your own colorings to suit your video. Again, what you use depends on your footage and the type of video you're wanting to use, but a lot of colorings use things like the color corrector, the curves, the gradient map, HSL adjust, things like that are all good places to start when trying to make your own coloring. Um, for this um, video, I'm just using a coloring that I downloaded off of YouTube to save a lot of time. And, to and then another thing that I should mention is when you're adding overlays or gradients on top of your videos, adding overlays or gradients on top of your videos is also another thing you can do. Like for this one, I'm adding a white center gradient set on screen. Um, but the thing about adding gradients or overlays on top of your videos is you have to be really careful not to go totally crazy with it because it'll ultimately make your video look cluttered and worse than if you hadn't added any at all if you're not careful. Um, it's really hard to correctly pull off a high contrast or overlay heavy video. So I think less is more is really a term that applies here. That's about it for my video editing. It's really just, I think, a lot of common sense and experimentation to see what looks nice and being really patient and making sure that you spend the time to make everything look the way you see it in your head or to make it look perfect if you don't have anything in mind beforehand. Um, I really hope this video has been helpful to somebody. I don't feel like it's going to be that helpful because I haven't really shown you anything in particular. I basically just talked at you for a few minutes about really vague, generalized video editing concepts. But hopefully somebody can draw something from maybe watching me do this. Or... But hopefully somebody can draw something from maybe watching my screen as I do a video edit. Um... If not, like I said earlier, I do have a links to a few specific tutorials down at the bottom that can show you how to do some effects that I see quite a lot and effects that I really like to use. I just didn't have time to go over all of them individually in this video, you know, and plus there are tons of great tutorials on these already. I feel like it would be kind of redundant for me to go into detail about another masking tutorial, or another overlay tutorial, or another 3D track motion tutorial, etc, etc. So just check those out, and hopefully you can find something that will assist you a little bit more than this did. Again, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions on anything you've seen me do in this video, or anything you've seen me do in a previous video, just let me know and I will do my best to either make a tutorial on how to do that or just in written text or even direct you to a tutorial that can show you how to do it a little better than maybe I could.